Welcome back. We'll continue the second part of uh, this Genesis Spectra Bible study. Uh, it's the beginning of the nation of Israel. Since there is no hope, no way from mankind to be saved, we can see that God Himself started with them to work by calling one man, Abraham. And uh, through the ancestors' faith, God uh, completes this uh, and them to be straight. First one, Adam, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. The four part. Abraham. Abraham's life is based on Hebrews Genesis chapter 12, verse 2. This is, I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make you name great, and you will be a blessing. This is God's promise for Abraham and also all mankind. Divide by Abraham calling, training, and uh, Abraham eyes up, and God's test and confirmation. Chapter 12. This is part that God called Abraham. God calling from, uh, go from your country, your people, and your father, your father's household, to the land I will show you. After God's call, Abraham, Abraham, God promised, I will make you into a great nation, I will bless you, I will make you name great, and you will be a blessing. The God called Abraham, this is God, the God of hope. It's out of this for, uh, full of sin of the world, God called Abraham, and he started redemptive, uh, redemptive work. And great thing is, Adam, Abraham went out as the Lord uh, had told him. This is his simple obedience. Even though he didn't know where he should go, but he simply obeyed. Chapter 13 and 14, between Abraham and Lot. In chapter 13, there is some trouble between Abraham and Lot. But Abraham let uh, Lot chose uh, the land, but Abraham lived in Kenya, and Lot lived among the other cities of the plain. Abraham could do so, let uh, Lot choose the better land, but he stayed in the plain because he believed. He began to seek God. Because God is the one who gives blessing. And at chapter 13, there is big trouble uh, for a uh, lot. The five kings, southern kings, rebelled against the four northern kings. And the four kings can, uh, invade their cities, the, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, and they carried off a lot in his position. But out of shepherd's heart, Moses Abraham rescued a lot. And at the end of chapter 14, Abraham, <coughs> Abraham gave tenths of everything, but he did not take any of the material things from plunder. We can see that his, uh, what he's seeking is very clear. It is not material blessing. It is not some comfort, but it is God's blessing. So he is really seeking the name of God through his life of faith. In chapter 15, the important part is the Lord, the, the word of the Lord came to him. In the time of hopeless, still, though God called him to be a blessing, but still he didn't have any son. But at the time of despair, the word of God came to him and renewed Abraham's uh, promise and renewed his faith. He clearly says, Your son, who is your own flesh with blood, uh, will be your heir. Your offspring will be like stars in the sky. And then even he, God, shows him what God is going to do through his uh, descendants. Chapter 16 and chapter 17, we can see the contrast between unbelief of uh, Sarah and Abraham and also God's eternal covenant. 
Sarah, out of doubt, uh, doubt has promised, and everyone agrees, so they tried to have a son through Hagar, and they actually, Hagar bore the son, but this caused big trouble. But in 17, God knew uh, his covenant through with Abraham. In chapter 14, uh, 17, verse 4, and that you will the father of many nations, and he, God changed his name from Abraham from Abraham. And God clearly says, I will be their God for their own, uh, even their descendants. So you can see that God himself established his own covenant based on his own faithfulness. In chapter 18, we can see that Abraham's faith, Abraham welcomed God's servant, and, uh, and God's servant, he confirmed his promise that Sarah will have a child at the appointment time. But Sarah couldn't believe that she left. Uh, and also they shared about God's point about Sodom and Gomorrah. But Abraham, out of uh, his shepherd heart, he prayed for uh, Lot, his nephew, to be saved from the destruction. In chapter 19, you can see God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sinfulness. But still, out of destruction, God remembered Abraham's prayer, and he, uh, angel, saved Lot and his family. Chapter 20, God blessed. Uh, here, Abraham again uh, made another mistake, moved to Negev and stayed in the Beer. So Abraham said, uh, Sarah is his sister. So Abimelech uh, took, tried to took Sarah as her, as her wife. But God uh, uh, cursed, actually cursed uh, Abimelech's house church and warned them, Abraham is the prophet and he will pray for you. So Abimelech uh, sent Sarah back to Abraham, and Abraham prayed for his house church. And Abraham, uh, through Abraham's prayer, God restored his house, blessed his household. Finally, in chapter 21, God blessed Abraham's faith and uh, gave the son Isaac. But at the same time, uh, here we can see the Abraham should make a clear decision. He cannot keep uh, Ishmael because uh, Ishmael could not be a God's blessing. So we cannot carry it. We cannot carry God's blessing with our own old uh, fruit of sin. So Abraham, uh, Hagar, and Ishmael, they had been, uh, uh, Abraham cut off the relationship from Hagar and Ishmael, but God is the faithful God, so God, as God promised Hagar, God promised Hagar that Ishmael, even he, he will become uh, numerous and bless them, that Ishmael, uh, he will be also the Ishmael. In chapter 22, finally, uh, God, Abraham feared God. So here, God tests Abraham's uh, faith. So I asked Abraham to sacrifice his one and only son, Isaac. Right. Abraham, there was no hesitate. He prepared all the environment, and he take uh, Isaac, and he was uh, at the mountain. He built the altar. He was about to kill Isaac. So God knows what Isaac means to Abraham, so he commanded him to sacrifice Isaac. But Abraham did not hesitate. He obeyed God's command right away because he knew that God is the first and God is the one who gave Isaac to him. So Samuel Lee says, 
Abraham could do so because he knew the creation order. He lived by the creation order principle that God is the first. Chapter 23 is Sarah's death. We can learn that Abraham even could, uh, could not have land to bury Sarah, but she had to buy uh, the field uh, to bury uh, Sarah's body. But here, he did not get any free money. He actually paid uh, to buy the uh, field. Here's a summary of Abraham's life of faith. He simply believed in God's promise and obeyed. Faith in God Almighty, who are able to keep what He promised. That's, that's the, his simple faith. Second part is Isaac, the first the, the Abraham's servant. God uh, prepared Abraham's servant to uh, get a wife for Isaac from his, uh, his relative. Here, uh, we can see the servant's attitude, how he carried God, the mission with a sense of responsibility. And finally, he brought uh, Rebecca. Uh, and uh, Isaac welcomed Rebecca, and they built a house church. This is uh, Isaac. And their son, uh, Isaac's family, chapter 25. Here, uh, Isaac, even though he lived a very pure life before God, Abimelech began to accuse out of envy. But Isaac's great thing is he humbly, uh, he did not fight against uh, men. Fight against, uh, he didn't fight against the uh, human's power, but he simply obeyed God's command to remain a uh, stay in gear. That's the one of the Isaac's greatness, to simply obey God, bearing all the persecutions and misunderstanding. The life of uh, faith. So that's the submit to God's will. That's a summary of Isaac's uh, life of faith. Jacob. Uh, Isaac wants to uh, give blessing to Esau, but uh, Rebecca uh, wants to uh, actually bless uh, Jacob. So Rebecca uh, took a really uh, brave act of faith because he, she remembered God's blessing upon uh, the Jacob. Uh, Jacob. Because uh, Jacob took a blessing from Esau, he had to run away from uh, his, father, uh, his brother Esau. And then chapter 24, he ran away to uh, Lebanon. And there, uh, Jacob uh, met, uh, on the way, he met God in his dream. And uh, he built up, he saw, the uh, in his dream, he see the God's vision. And the Lord introduced him to God, uh, as God of uh, their father Abraham, Isaac. And also God promised to give the land and blessing to be the source of blessing. And also uh, God promised them to be with him until he uh, fulfilled his promise. And then uh, after he woke up from the dream, he vowed to give tenth to God. And, and he set up a stone and called his uh, called the place Bethel. Jacob ordered Haran in Haran, and he met Rachel, and they fall in. Uh, he uh, Jacob uh, 
Jack was in love with Rachel, so he asked to work seven years uh, for Jake, uh, Rachel. But Reban, is, he deceived Jacob, and uh, at the wedding night, instead of uh, Rachel, he gave Leha. But Jacob was uh, really uh, jealous, he was an ambitious man, so he uh, asked to work seven years for Rachel. So he, uh, he worked for Levan, uh, Levan another seven years to kill Rachel. And Jacob loved Rachel. He worked for Levan another seven years. But God makes uh, Leah fruitful with four sons. This is Jacob's children and wealth in chapter 30. Uh, Jacob tried to have only one wife, Rachel. But God gave him four wives with the 12, 11 uh, brought, uh, children, 12 children. This is the four wives and the 12 sons in one number. And in chapter 31, the Lord commanded Jacob to go back to his uh, homeland. And Jacob uh, took his wives. Uh, told them how God commanded him, how God blessed him. So Jacob, uh, Jacob fled with all he had, and they were headed for Gilead. But Laban pursued them, uh, tried to uh, caught them with him in Gilead. But God protected them, and Jacob, And finally, at the end of uh, chapter 31, Laban blessed his daughters and grandchildren and returned home. There was no any harm and worry. In chapter 32, uh, actually Jacob was in a big distress, out of fear, even though he had a lot of blessings, but he could, out of fear, uh, he could not cross the Jacob uh, River. So at the night, Jacob sent gift to Esau, but he stayed in that place, and Jacob wrestled with God, and God blessed him with a new name, Israel. Jacob, uh, God gave him, uh, renamed Israel, because you have struggled with God, with not uh, with uh, humans, and have overcome. So here, we can see that uh, two so struggling with God personally is very, uh, everyone should have this time of struggle with God until we overcome our sin problem and uh, our own uh, problems. Chapter 31, Jacob reconciled with Esau. And Jacob would have stayed uh, in uh, Scots. Uh, he didn't want to go back to Bethel, but while he stayed in that place, there was a big problem because of one uh, Diana was uh, raped by a scam. And uh, Jacob's son uh, yeah, he killed every male in scheme yeah. in a uh, sneaky way. So they agreed to give uh, the Diana as their, uh, as their wife. But they uh, asked them to circumcise. But three days later, uh, Simeon and Levi killed every male. So they, take, uh, they take all their wealth and all their women and children, everything in the houses. But they rebuked their two sons because they, this might brought big problems to their household. So they, Jacob, had to move to Bethel. But God blessed Jacob in Bethel, and God commanded Jacob to go to Bethel and build an altar to God. And God uh, appeared to him again and blessed him, and God named him uh, Israel, and confirmed his name Israel again. Uh, chapter 36 is Esau's descendants. Here the summary of Jacob's life of faith, struggle, struggling faith for God's blessings. 
So no blessings just given to him. He had to struggle to get blessings from God every moment. But also God reward his desire for blessing and also God wants to bless him. And also those who seek God's blessings, God surely bless. And uh, part three, Joseph's life. Jacob's uh, eleventh son was Jake, uh, Joseph. He is the one that Jacob really uh, loves. But because of his father's love, the brothers were uh, out of jealousy. They really hate him, and uh, they decide to sell. Uh, they actually sold him as a slave to Egypt. The son of Jacob, they liked his father. That Jacob died. So Joseph died. So Jacob thought that Joseph really died. Chapter nine: The Lord's with Joseph. It is the chapter thirty-nine is about Joseph's life in Egypt. But the key point is the Lord was with Joseph so that he is prosper. He knew the. The master. Uh, Pharaoh's officer, uh, Patiphas, they noticed God's blessing and God has been with him, Joseph. And he was falsely accused by his wife and he was uh, put in prison. But even in the prison, the Lord was with him. And uh, the warden, so he noticed that God has been with him. So he entrusted everything to Joseph. So no matter where he go, Joseph had been a servant, faithful servant of God. Chapter 40 is uh, Joseph's interpret dream. In the prison, there was two uh, prison, uh, to put to prison chief uh, cupbearers and also uh, uh, chief baker. They were in prison, they had a dream, but they could not interpret their own dream, but Joseph interpreted their dreams. Joseph said, do not interpret this belong to God, tell me your dream. So he revealed to uh, God who God is, and he, uh, he interpreted their dream, and the exact uh, uh, Baker's dream, uh, interpret, uh, Cupbearer's dream interpretation. Within three days, uh, Pharaoh will restore his position, and Baker's dream interpretation, within three days, he will be killed. That, ha that had happened exactly. Uh, Joseph interpreted. Joseph asked him, asked them to remember, but they uh, forgot. And two years later, some years, the Pharaoh had two dreams, so no one could interpret. But at that time, the cupbearer, he remembered Joseph, and they called Joseph to interpret uh, Pharaoh's dream. Uh, Pharaoh, Joseph, it says, clearly, I cannot do it, but God will give Pharaoh the answer he desires. So Joseph interpreted the dream. He said, that God has shown Pharaoh what he's going about to do. So he, according to his dream, the fat cow, seven fat cow, and the ugly fat cow, that means abundant seven years, and the famine of seven years. Even though they will have seven years abundance, but after that, the seven years famine will take over. Joseph not even not only did interpret the dream, but he gives advice to the Pharaoh. And Pharaoh saw that God was with Joseph. The Pharaoh put Joseph in charge of the whole land of Egypt. So everyone should come to Joseph to uh, Joseph to uh, receive uh, the, uh, the food. And uh, chapter 22, the famine was so severe, so Joseph's brothers, they had to come to have uh, some food. But at first time, they could not recognize Joseph. And uh, Joseph really uh, wants to uh, help to uh, repent of their sins. Joseph accused them as a spy and asked them to bring, uh, bring the young brother. And, but 
the brothers, uh, Joseph suggests that one of the brothers stay in prison, that's Simeon. The brothers, they were on the way to death. The brothers were captured uh, by the sense of guilt and their condemnation. Uh, after they went back to the land, they told everything. And so Jacob really wants to, uh, he could not let Benjamin go to go back, uh, go to Egypt with them. But they had to go back to get some food. At this time, they uh, Jacob's son go back to Egypt with Benjamin. Judah actually take a responsibility, promise that Benjamin is safe, safe return, and he will take responsibility for him. Yeah. That day they were led to Joseph and they had a big feast. Joseph met his brothers and Benjamin, but he could not reveal himself. Here, uh, we can see how Joseph uh, help his brothers to recognize their sins and repent. Uh, Joseph, at the, in verse 17 to 34, Judah asked to be slave instead of Benjamin because Benjamin was caught. Uh, Joseph's uh, cup was found in Benjamin's bag. Joseph uh, wants to take only Benjamin as a slave and send the rest of the brothers back. But Judah tells that uh, Joseph of his father, and uh, Judah uh, actually asked to be a slave instead of Benjamin. Then, uh, at this time, uh, Joseph uh, really uh, revealed himself, and Joseph testified that God's sovereignty. It was God to save the lives that God sent to me ahead of you. God sent to me ahead of you to preserve for you. It is not you, but God. So God, Joseph revealed God's sovereignty upon uh, his life and uh, his family. Joseph, uh, finally, the brothers went back and uh, take the Jacob to Israelite. So all family, uh, Joseph could meet uh, Jacob. At the end of chapter 20, uh, 48, Jacob, uh, at the end of his life, Joseph, uh, Jacob blessed uh, his uh, sons and also Joseph's sons. Uh, Jacob blessed Joseph's sons. Jacob gives thanks to God and give, uh, that God allowed him to receive Joseph and his, uh, his children. So two will become great, but his younger will be greater than him. So he put Ephraim ahead of Manasseh. So two of them were... Uh, Jacob, uh, 48, chapter 48 is uh, Jacob's blessing of, uh, for his uh, uh, the sons. Chapter 50 is uh, Jacob's barrier and Joseph's death. In chapter of God has done all things to save many lives. That's the uh, Joseph's testimony. He said, You intend to harm me, but God intended for good to accomplish what is now being done, the save of many lives. He looked at his life uh, based on God's sovereignty. So Joseph's life of faith. So the Lord was with Joseph so that he prospered. And every time to, uh, take, uh, Joseph remembered that God has been with him, and finally uh, he recognized that God's sovereignty upon his life. This book of Genesis, uh, Kivers, uh, the one verse one, God created the heavens and earth as God is the creator. But because of sin, all men destined to death. But in chapter 12, God began his redemptive work by calling one man Abraham. And chapter 50, uh, 50, verse 20, it is God actually who uh, carried God's redemptive history through Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, the beginning of the nation is Israel. So, no, through one man, Abraham, 
God himself carried out his uh, work of salvation work, redemptive work. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and it, they become the Israelites. God considered Christ faithful. This is the genealogy in the Genesis, uh, Genesis, the 11 time. Based on genealogy, which Samuel Lee made this uh, out, uh, outline of the book of Genesis. We can go back to the key verses, chapter 31, uh, 1 verse 31, God's creation order. All God's work based, uh, has been done based on this God's desire to restore creation order. And God's love has been revealed uh, in calling Abraham as our ancestor of faith and as a source of blessing. That's the chapter 12 verse to key verse. Through this Genesis Bible study, what I learned is one thing is God redemptive restored by calling one man Abraham. So through Abraham, God started his work. So we can, uh, like Abraham, those who accept God's calling with a simple obedience, God will, God will start his redemptive work in our lives. Thank you. Joseph Lee from New Jersey, and let us give thank God, let's give thanks to God for the second day of GLEF 2019. Um, we thank God for the attendance of so many precious servants from the, all over the world, and now it's reaching over 100 people attending. Now, I want to especially thank God for the joining of our senior missionaries and shepherds from all over the world. Yeah, let's give them a hand. They made such sacrifice, not only in their youth, but in their senior life, you know, to be here really to empower us and to pray for our next generation. And it is such a privilege for us to be with them and pray with them for the upcoming generation. Amen. The program of GLEF can be tight, if you haven't noticed. And especially for the, um, the young generation of 60 plus years old. So please pace yourself and you have the freedom to come to the program that you would like to. And this only applies to the people 60 years old or older. Yeah. So young people, yeah, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> and yeah, let's remember what we have heard at the first thing, the Genesis Special Study, uh, presented by missionary Peter Kim. Let's give hands real quick. Jersey, who was my shepherd, who was my mentor. Uh, the book of Genesis really taught us the sovereignty of God that He is the Almighty God, He is the Creator God. Yeah. God is the source of everything and from the beginning to the very end. And all things from, come from God the blessings and curses, life and death, and everything comes from God. God made a paradise, but the man fell because of sin and temptation. But it does not end there, but God promised us Jesus Christ, who becomes a savior, and with his life and death, it became very true. So throughout GLE of 2019, we are learning the five books, not one book, but the five books of Moses. And from these books, we want to pray that we can learn and accept who God is. Not habitually, but personally and intimately, we want to learn 
and accept who God is. Because by knowing who God is, your life can be complete. So let us continue to pray at each and every gathering that may God reveal himself to us. Amen. God is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Joseph. And may the Creator God become the God of Peter, Samuel, Noah, and every one of you today. Amen. The attendants are coming, and the folks from Baltimore also brought me yesterday. So please enjoy the fellowship that we have uh, here in, at the, uh, the forum. So I have announcements. All the G, uh, G, GBS, School Bible Study Leaders, will have the breakfast with Missionary Joshua and Sarah Lee. So please find them at the breakfast place. And if you'd like to make any printouts, if you want to print out your testimony or lecture, please come to room four at the end of the corner over there, not go to the, accept, uh, the reception of the front desk. The swimming pool is open from 7.30 a.m. to 10.30 10 p.m. Only for the attendance of 30 year olds, 30 or older. So if you're 15 and if you really want to go, Come to me, let's pray about this. <laughs> okay. You are free to use the trampoline outside. You saw the bouncing thing, right? The trampoline. You are free to use that if you are 10 years old or younger. <laughs> After each meeting, take your belongings. Okay. You're putting your pencil case there, laptop there, does not claim that it is your place. Please take your belonging and take care of the folder that you received as a matter of life and death. <laughs> if not, it will be collected and it will be distributed to others who really want them. Amen. Alright, the water here is very safe to drink. Not only safe, but it's very... The best water around is from the mountains here, spring water. So please enjoy the tap water here because it's not a regular tap water. Today it will be the, the hottest day of the week, of probably the next two weeks. Please hydrate, your, hydrate yourself accordingly so that you don't fall in this hot weather. Let's also pray for the live testimony shares today. Uh, second gen missionaries Aster Cho and second gen missionary Paul Choi to reveal God's glory through their life testimonies. Uh, last but not least, please remember to pray for missionary Maria Cho from New Jersey who really wanted to be here but because of the, the, her health condition with the pregnancy she could not be here, but she's really here with the Spirit. Um, so please pray for her and her baby to, in the womb to be healthy for the delivery in December. So thank you very much. Um, I'll pray and then I'll surely pray. And then let's pray two by two and go for the breakfast. Dear Father in heaven, the creator of all things, the source of all things, death and life, blessings and curses, all things belongs to you and we belong to you. You are the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You are the God of Joseph, you are the God of Noah, Samuel, David and everyone who is standing here. Lord, please Come to us and help us to learn and accept who you are through this forum. Please intimately and personally reveal yourself to us. Let us know who you are. Also, the purpose, the very purpose and the meaning of our lives may be found by knowing who you are. 
Help us to also discover the lost identity of ours as the kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Let us be found in our mission that Jesus gives us to spread the gospel to the ends of the earth. Today is the second day of two weeks of conference. Now it is really time for us to draw our attention to the five books of Moses and learn of who you are. Please be with us throughout the day, especially as we open up the Exodus School Bible study today. Please reveal your glory through each and every program and through each and every lecture and testimony on all the programs that we have prepared. Please accept us as a sacrificial worship for each and every program. We pray for missionary Peter Kim, who devoted himself for the campus mission and the war mission, starting from New Jersey UBF. Please continue to use him preciously for your war mission work. We now are going to for, for breakfast, and please be with us for the continuous fellowship today. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please, uh, please pray to my team.